All right, sir, we are live. I'm just gonna confirm that we are live on our Facebook page here. <clears throat> All right, let's do a quick check. You can't hear the phone, right? The fan. Uh, no, I can't hear your phone, no. Uh, looks like, yeah, looks like we are live. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Master Ali Gafour here, CEO of 2020 Armor, former Canadian national team member. Got with me, this gentleman, you've, if you've been competing or actively competing, you've seen his face. Uh, probably every single game that's out there that's physically, he's able, that you're able to go to. Um, <laughs> Terrence Jennings, uh, former uh, Olympian bronze medalist. Um, what which division? Your feather, right? No, the negative 68, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Minus 68. Uh, we competed around the same time span. We never actually fought each other. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we fought around the same time span and now, uh, coach Jennings is coach for the military team for, for the U S and, um, is actively, uh, coaching them at a, at a, at an international level. He's also a gamer, an avid gamer. I didn't know how avid until we, we chatted in, in, in Canada here at nationals, uh, the Canadian nationals that happened about a month ago, but uh, you're pretty big into call of duty. Is that your yeah. Game? yeah, that's only that's honestly it's the only game I play now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I hate I I love to hate it because it makes me so angry. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So so big gamer and um and uh, you know Coach uh, Jennings watched the UBL and we were chatting about it about all and we're talking about the future of it and kind of uh, obviously there's lots of gaming elements there and we were discussing about how the the rules for the UVL and all the different things we could do and we got kind of just kind of like excited 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 and it was a rare chance for us to talk because usually you're there at Canadian Nationals um, supporting your wife uh, and you didn't have an active active role as you do in most tournaments where you got like whatever your ten athletes coaching so you had a little bit more downtime so we mm -hmm. we, could, uh, we could chat and we kind of got into it and we're we're talking about again the gaming and the UVL but we're watching the the, the matches. And we're commentating on kind of uh, what some folks are doing right and what some folks weren't doing right uh, with the new rules. And we just said, "Hey, like you know, we're just having a great conversation. Let's uh, let's chat about it with uh, with some other folks watching." And um, and here we are. So that's kind of how it all started. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we get the chance to sit down and like talk about this stuff. I mean, we we usually have conversations like shorter here and there. But I think Canada, the Canadian nationals, like a pretty of a longer one. So it was some good good stuff we we talked about. So hopefully we can go over some of it today. Yeah, yeah. So um, so this will be this is being recorded and also shared. Uh, we'll share it afterwards. Uh, and if there's any uh, questions, uh, you can leave them in the comments, and we will get to them uh, either during the show or after the show. Um, <clears throat> but first, uh, I want to put a little bit of a of a backdrop of so far um, the amount of games that you've been to with the new rule changes. And uh, and let's kind of kind of seed it with that. So you were at Belgium, but that only applied to the the, the cadets. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, you were at which games? Puerto Rico Open had the they they switched it back to the seniors as well for the new rules. So we did the new rules in Puerto Rico, and then um, just recently in the Dominican Republic for the Pan Am Championships and then the Open afterwards. Right, right. So um, we've so let's say uh, two or three official games, and then you're you're. Uh, American games, I think the Grand Prix. Have you guys moved over to the new? No, there? not not yeah. for the last two that we did. I think moving forward, we'll be using the new rules. I think we, they just had some competition that they they use the new rules for whatever, like our Grand Prix qualifications or. Something. Right, right, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, based on on uh, on 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 what you've seen so far, and, and how many athletes do you, do you coach now for the military? Uh, five total. Five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And generally, when they compete uh, out of the five, um, any sort of kind of given game, how how far along do they get usually in, in the events? Most of the medal, quarterfinals. Yeah, we had well this past one in uh, for the for the Pan Am Championships. Um, one of our guys, uh, David Kim, actually made it to the, the finals, so he ended up with silver. Okay. Um, I had another um, guy, Josh Liu, who made it to the semifinals, so he ended up with bronze. And um, for the open, we had. Pretty much the same results. David got back to the the finals. Josh um, finished with third, and then Calfani Harris finished with third. 
and Nat, Natalie Liesko, who fought also, which I, I coach her as well. She ended up with third as well. So um, normally with the, with the way it is now, I mean, our goal is always to get on the podium, right? right. I mean, sometimes I have one guy at um, JC drop, uh, drop in quarterfinals, but it was a tough match against Domin Dominican Republic. Um, but, I mean, you got to always aim for the podium and aim for You, you want to be in the finals because that's the only way you can win, right? Right, so, right. So in, my, so in my mind, we're always aiming to get to the finals. So Right, right. Okay, so again, just to give you uh, everyone context of the um, <clears throat> the amount of players uh, that Terrence um, coaches, uh, where they kind of get to, and the amount of games. So obviously, you have very active, uh, compete at a high level, uh, medal at a high level, and based on what you've seen so far in the last two months, uh, three months, and the games that you've been to. The, the top three significant changes, uh, obviously the round base winning two out of three rounds uh, is significant. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in my mind, uh, I'd like to hear your opinion as well. The, the most significant, the number of warnings before disqualification. Uh, so I believe it's four now. Um, five. 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 They updated mm -hmm. to five. Yeah. Five. So five, uh, if you get five warnings in a round and you lose the round. Um, and then what would you think, what would you say is, is would be the third biggest change to consider as training as a trainer um, or as an athlete um I, like i know they can't they did um trying to get rid of the cancels they're right. being a little bit more strict on a number of times you can kick out i don't for me like the last games i went to i don't see it be as being as significant as the first two you named right. um, because that's very i think that's very subjective and it's it's hard to call those in, in, in the fast action sometimes that, that happens in right. sport, so I, I would I would probably just have to focus on the first two to be honest with you, um, right? Because the other two are just I feel like they're the same. It's just now they have an option to be a little bit more strict on it if it's like a blatant one, you know? Yeah, and we were, we were talking about that before we went live. In that the rule for getting rid of canceling was always there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not like that's a new rule. Uh, they uh, you mentioned they kind of changed the wording a little bit to kind of maybe bring it back to life, but. Yeah, it uh, and also from your experience in, in the last games, it didn't seem like they were extra tight on on calling those sort of um, uh, I guess leg up techniques, anyways, other than the obvious blatant ones. Right. Yeah. I think I mean for me, I guess it's weird because you know I've, I've fought taekwondo for a long time, I've competed for a long time. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with the cancel. I think it's a it's an interesting way to defend yourself um, as far as like deflecting. Cause you look at boxing, you know, they parry stuff and block stuff as well. And it's, so it's not a problem per se. I just, I feel like when we do it and, and that's all we're doing and we're just standing in the middle of the ring. So, I mean, even now with our training, we're doing a, we're doing a little bit of both. I think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm more heavy on the movement than anything. Cause I think if you can make someone miss is you're better off, you know? Right, right. Yeah, um, and so what we're going to cover today is, um, like I said, we're going to talk about these rule changes, and then in particular, um, what uh, Coach Jennings is doing from a training perspective for his athletes, and um, kind of what he's what he's seeing, and and, and how how athletes and, and coaches are dealing with uh, these two particular significant changes, being the uh, winning two out of three rounds and and the warnings. So. Um, <clears throat> So how are you um, training your athletes differently? How, and how, so that we'll start with that one first, and then we'll get into how, how your athletes are reacting to, to that training. What, what have you changed from before the rules to, to now? Um, I, think if, I think if anything, I think we stretch the clinch a little bit more, just different ways to kind of fight in a clinch. I mean, and to be honest, not fighting the clinch, to break the clinch, to move. I mean, all the stuff that you – the tools that – the tools that we've used in the game prior to the rule change is now just kind of emphasizing those a little bit more to make sure we can we can manage that during why the why the clinch? Oh, uh, because I mean, right now we're getting gomjons for for non-activity in the clinch, basically, or over aggression in the clinch where the person's pushing and you're trying to kick. The, the, I think that's right now is one of the toughest part, toughest coaching parts in our sport right now because it, it can go one way or another, right? The person pushing gets the gomjon. The person that looks like they're holding can get the gomjon. The person that's you know, just kind of like, look, I'm not fighting. They get a gamjan. So I think that's a, a very difficult coaching situation. Um, so we're just working with it as well and kind of just playing with that and different things. And it's it's nothing new. I mean, we go back to 
I hate using the word old school Taekwondo. We go back to when we when we competed. The clinch was a huge part of the game. But we just didn't right. stay there and push on each other, right? We mm-hmm. got to the clinch. We switched our feet. We stepped out. We turned around. We went high. We hit low. You know, so there's a lot of things that we did in the clinch that condone the game being fast in the clinch. We never stayed there. Very few times right. that we just, like, stay there and the referee break us, you know. Maybe towards the end of the third rounds when everybody was a little bit more fatigued. Right. But, um, we, we had a lot of variation in the clinch and things that we did in the clinch that – made the game, like the clinch was actual fighting game and not a let me push on you until you get tired and hopefully find a spot and maybe you make a mistake and fall over, that type of thing. So right, right. just emphasizing that um, from a, um, from a, I guess, a, a game standpoint, but also just a mentality standpoint, you know, knowing not just to be there for all this stuff. Because if I had to say one way or another, the person that's being less active right now for the last couple of games, it looks like, are the ones getting the gomdons in the clinch. You know, some people are like pushing to create space to try to kick and they're getting called for holding when the other person is just kind of leaning their weight forward and stopping them from creating space. So it's a, it's, it's a yeah. tough spot where we are with the, the clinch game right now. So so that's so that's really addressing the second uh, major change. So we talked about two, uh, mm-hmm. winning two out of three rounds and, and yeah. the second managing the warnings. So, so that's really your... Would that would you say that's your primary thing is managing that warnings because it's such a, such a big impact and and man, part of that is the clinch. Yeah, I mean, realistically, like we always get gomdos for going out of the ring, right? We always get gomdos for 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 falling. Those are normal. Kicking low, those are normal. Kicking out the calio, those are normal. But excuse me, it's this new one where if we get into the clinch, it becomes a wrestling match, or we kick, or maybe both people are kicking and they don't break at in the time, and someone's getting gone It's it's someone's gonna get one. It's not like we're breaking. Right. Normally we break the clinch, separate, and just restart the match. But every time we get stuck in the clinch, someone's gonna get called for a warning or both people. And with it only being five gomdons per round, that becomes huge later on. Right, right. Or later in the round per se, not later on in the match, but later in the round. Um, and then I've noticed a difference uh, on both. Belgium and and Canada uh, with the guys and the girls. Guys, obviously, stronger upper body, and they're just a lot more manhandling in the clinch Mm -hmm. uh, versus the females. They didn't really um, use that because, obviously, they get tired more with the the upper body, with less upper body strength. Uh, Do you have any girls on the military team, or is it all guys for you? All guys right now. And then, obviously, but then you have Nat, your wife. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you notice a difference between females and males on, on strategy and clinch and training? Um, no, I mean, like I said, the last few games that I've seen, they've, um, they're calling them the same way. If they get into the clinch and they're wrestling around and they don't break, someone gets a gomjohn. I mean, of course, I think it's all relative. So one person's stronger than the other. Not, you know what I mean? Right. Like, so that, that person's more more likely to be able to control the clinch and push forward and clinch a little bit more. I mean, there's certain countries and certain athletes that train. That's like their forte. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a problem. I think the, I think it was okay. I think it was okay where we were. I, I don't think that every time we get into the clinch and nothing happens per se that we need to be given deductions one way or another or both ways. Right. Right. Okay. So we talked about. So we're talking about right now um, how uh, Coach Jennings with his uh, five military uh, athletes who consistently perform at an international level. Um, what he's doing with them in in, in particular uh, for the two major. Um, Rule changes, the winning two out of three rounds, and the warnings, five warnings, and you lose a round, and how he's what he's focusing on. So one of the things you mentioned is uh, the uh, again managing the clinch better. What uh, so uh, so that we can manage the amount of warnings that you get because that's such a, a dicey area where um, warnings are given out. When I say warnings, I mean minus points. That's old school habits mm-hmm. <laughs> kicking in there. Um, what about then for the other significant change, uh, winning two out of three rounds? How are you coaching training differently for that? Um, I don't. I, as far as training change, I don't think that's a big, big of a deal. I think it's more of a mentality change, if anything, or just like a readdressing a mentality. I mean, nobody wants to go out there and lose the first round, right? So mm. I think a lot of fighters across the board are starting faster because that first one is first one's huge. The first one gives you one round in your pocket to kind of to kind of okay either be more aggressive or maybe you slow it down and play the game a little bit more. Uh-huh. Um, I just I guess just making sure my guys are able to start the matches fast, you know, start the matches fast physically, but like more so mentally. You know, before you can kind of have that little build up where maybe you have a solid round. Let's say you go out there in the first round in six five, right? And you did some good things, you did some bad things, but you started a little just 
slower than normal. Right. But now that matters because normally we wouldn't fret at a 6 5. You, you, you have an athlete and your athlete's losing 6 5 after the first round. You come back and like, okay, good round. We yeah, this is one point. yeah, who cares? It's, right. it's no problem. That's a gum run. That's a punch. That's easy. Right. But now it goes back to 0 0. So that first round is huge. So we can't afford to lose by one, you know? Right. Um, so just, just making sure they start fast, like I think physically and mentally, um, kind of like taking the fight into their own hand as opposed to waiting to see how the round develops per se, you know? Right. And if we, if we make too many mistakes in the first round, then again, it's better that we went out there and like we talked about applied the pressure and, and fought that first round and maybe it doesn't go our way, but at least we've got some building blocks more so for that second round. Maybe we made them tired. Maybe we made them, you know, they're, they're confused and maybe we come back to the chair and I think, the only other thing outside of the coaching, I think it uh, it's interesting for me, and I like it a lot because it allows, I think it allows coaches to coach more, because now right. as opposed to coming back, you see some matches you come back and you're down nine one in the first round, right? You're trying to coach them back up while managing the points and blah blah, right. blah blah all that stuff. But now it goes back to zero zero, so you got a chance to come back to the chair. Your coach, like, okay, we got to change this whole thing. We got to switch sides. We got to motion more. We got to follow off the front leg. We got to hit that punch. So you can kind of build into a new game and get away with winning that second round. And now it's back right. to an even match, you know? Right. I think it allows the coaches to be more, to, to coach more, to be honest with you. you know? Right. Yeah. That's very interesting. I never thought of it that way. Um, because, yeah, because now if, if you're down 9 1, obviously you're not doing a lot of right things in the first round because you lost by a, a big gap. Mm -hmm. But now starting to start in the second round, it, you're at zero so it's a new, technically it's a you can call it a new game a new day right it's, it's how you change yourself mentally right. you're back on 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 even footing okay let, let's try a, a different strategy yeah. and i've seen i've seen it both ways some people can i mean i've had athletes we, we've won the first round we've lost the first round but the, the adjustment is coming back and we've been able to win the second round and go on to win the third round so i think right. like i said i think it's a, it's a huge opportunity for coaches to really coach their athletes and really make those those changes that you can't really make it 9-1. You can't really make it 10-1. You could try, you, but you know your athlete has to go forward. And you know the other athlete can afford to stand flat or go back or just defend or or lead out just enough to control the game. Right. You know? yeah. But now going back to 0-0, zero, zero, it's a whole reset for both people and they got to come back out and fight, which they still have to expose themselves into the match as opposed to being able to save. Right, right. So, so the training, the physical training, um, hasn't changed significantly. Uh, you're really kind of addressing the mentality of it, uh, and the mentality being start off first, start off strong. What about ending it? Um, mm -hmm. So, obviously, you want to start with a lead, uh, mm -hmm. but then as the round is coming close to an, an end, and if you're down by three, four, five points, um, that managing that pressure managing those emotions right because mm. especially if it's the round that determines if you're going to win or lose the, the match um any kind of changes there either physically or mentally and to kind of how to deal with that sort of different scenario and pressure because that didn't exist before right unless you were in the third it only existed right. in the end of the third right. round but now right. it exists a lot more frequently mm -hmm. um i think like i think mentally it's the same thing i mean if there's a i'll be honest with you if we're we're 10 seconds to the end of the match and we're down by nine, the likelihood of us just going out there and recklessly kicking is might be a little pointless. Right. You know what I mean? But I also do believe in, in going forward and setting the standard for the next round. So if we're, right. we're down by nine and there's 20 seconds to go, we're still working forward. You have to, because you have to establish, I feel you have to establish that, that little bit of dominance or just know, let the person know that we're going to fight. You know, and, and, and maybe my cardio is better. So that 20 seconds of me pushing you cause you have to recover 20 seconds longer in between the break, you know? Right. So right. Uh, going forward like that, uh, so I would say phys uh, physically on the opposite side is, I mean, more cardio, I guess. Right. Um, I think cardio has always been huge in our game, especially when we went into the electronics. I mean, the majority of people that are able to go first often win more matches. Right. You know, the, the, the number of times they can affect the game, win more matches. Um, right. That's just that's just kind of where I see it. Yeah, and that's uh, we're going to talk about some interesting data points uh, a little bit. Um, we were geeking out at some of the gaming stuff, uh, and then uh, uh, I was talking about some of the data points, and we'll see kind of how uh, how that translates into a lot of stuff we're talking about. But so definitely setting setting the tone, being the aggressor uh, at at the beginning, and even if you're losing, to continue to set that tone. It's like, hey, I'm not, I'm never going to let it pressure, even if I'm losing. Um, that can affect their cardio, uh, their energy level, especially if you have better uh, cardio. Um, okay, cool. I think, um, the, sorry, I think the other interesting side is 
having to win those rounds and being up by one or two with 10 seconds to go. You know, you right. know, you got to close this round. You know, you got to kind of keep kicking. You got to keep fighting because now right. you can go from being up by two to giving that round away. And it's huge before. OK, let's say we're up by two and they score a headshot and we lose the round by one. We right. can still go back and salvage that like, hey, OK, right. let's calm down. But now you give up those big mistakes at the end of the round and it's devastating, you know. Right. So so if you're up defense or a very good strong offense to, to keep that uh yeah would you are you i mean obviously you need both um <laughs> do you do you sway more to uh just a strong offense uh, as your defense or um allow them to try to make the mistakes and, and just focus more on the defense I, I think in our game offense wins championships to mm-hmm. be honest with you um I, and i and i think there's ways to to modify the offense right maybe right. we're not Again, you watch any sport, football, basketball, baseball. Maybe we're not going for the big plays up by two. We're not throwing the spin hook kicks. We're not throwing the not of bonds. We're not doing the fence stuff. But maybe we are sticking with the basic cuts, the basic straight line shots that are maybe they'll score, but also they're controlling the game, you know, that type of thing. So I think the the variation in which you're you're taking your shots matters. And, of course, you're not going to go forward recklessly and get scored on, but to the same token – you have to be able to use your attacking techniques to control the game, so your defense can work, right? Because even right. if I if I attack you, it puts you it puts me in a better position to defend, as opposed to standing flat and letting you come come first and trying to figure out my defense and being reactive right. per se. Right, so. right, yeah. So when we were watching, we were chatting, um, you know, watching some of the fights. Um, we saw some fighters apply uh, some of these. Um, Tactics we're talking about the successful ones, well, and we saw some that 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 weren't um, that didn't apply it so well. So one of the things I noticed, and I'd like to get your opinion and see what you've noticed, um, you know, some athletes were <clears throat> kicking kicking volume, um, but it was almost to the point where what I noticed was it was this one particular fight. Um, she was kicking, uh, she was kicking a lot. It just wasn't scoring. And I felt like you could tell that she felt the pressure of winning, having to win all, the whole round and and let that overcome her and just sacrifice kicking for the sake of kicking without trying to figure out how, how to score and then just kind of burnt out. Whereas the other player then kind of took advantage of that, saw some of the openings, even had a more of a defensive style, even though she was kicking more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I found that like, uh, maybe some athletes were kind of doing that. And if you, if you kind of correlate that to maybe like in the early days when people kind of start uh, fighting, there's, again, just kick for the sake of kicking, just this volume, because uh, that's what we, we, we teach, right? Just at the beginning, it doesn't matter if you score, just just try and try to mm-hmm. land and, and, and hit things. I saw more of that uh, as things that aren't working. Um, anything that you've noticed that you've seen kind of some coaches and athletes do that, that doesn't work? That doesn't work in, in these, mm-hmm. new, these new rules? Um. I would just have to, the only thing I would have to say is maybe the, like I said, I harped on the clinch a little bit earlier, but it has to be the the, the clinch a bit, kind of deferring in the clinch. I mean, I mm. think I think you got to be willing to, I mean, if they're going to gonna be the one to wrestle and push and for the sake of it, grab and fight in the clinch, because at least you have some control, right? And, and they're calling it both ways, but at least the person that's kind of like trying to defer and try to figure out is getting scored on a little bit more often in the clinch. Maybe mm-hmm. they don't get the gum John, but we're putting ourselves in a situation where we're vulnerable to get scored on and give up points. So I would say there's one thing, one thing I see that I think that doesn't work is kind of like trying to defer and hold on in the clinch per se, as opposed to just fight. I'd rather I I, I guess I'd rather get the gum John for holding than the gum John and then scored on for 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 not holding. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Um, but I I think as far as things that work or don't work. I, and you said that after you were talking about was kicking, I guess you said recklessly and a lot. Um, if that's their style, that's their style. I think whatever it is, I don't, I don't think we we get to these new rules and we try to change what we're doing. I think we got to stick mm-hmm. with every single day at home. What, what are you used to doing? Like, how do you, when you do your test matches or your, your practice sparring matches, what are you doing then that's making you successful? Right. You know? And I think you got to kind of stick with that. And, of course, allow the coach to – to modify it for the different athletes in which you'll face at a competition. But I think sticking with what you, what you do normally. And, and I know some situations can don't, okay, I just got to kick because I'm down, but starting a match and trying to predict what's going to work and what's not going to work. I think that's what gets us in a little bit of trouble. I think you got to be yourself. I think you got to right. fight to your, your, your strengths, do the things that work for you. And of course, allow your coach to, 
kind of change and dictate the things that maybe the other person does well that you need to take away from them and you know this that and other that we do every day in the coaching chair but i think yeah. focusing on what you do well and and, and and taking that into the competition and not worrying about oh the referee's going to do this or this person's going to do this i think just right and we go back to you being the one affecting the game constantly right yeah and that, does, that doesn't change no we'll never change no matter what the rules are or what the scoring system is or anything like that absolutely so um, one thing we were talking about before was data and gaming. And obviously at 2020 Armor, that's something. And then UBL, that's something that we're big on. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys here uh, in the stream, a data stream for the uh, for the energy scoring. So in, in, in 2020 Armor, when you have, you can spar with two people, you record it on the app, so you get a phys uh, an actual video. And then after the match is done, you, you get this data log. So uh, we'll go over this data log. And I was talking with... Uh, with Terrence about uh, which these data points mean and which one would you focus, which one do you think is, is, is important, especially given in today's new game? And so we, we had some thoughts on that. And would like to hear um, uh, uh, the, the audience's thoughts on that as well. But I'll kind of quickly go over what it is first so you get an idea. So when the match finishes, you, you get the, a report that, that looks like like this. Oh, no, that's my daughter singing. <laughs> <laughs> um, good at singing Elsa. Um, so it, you get a, a, a number that says pressure. Uh, so there's a video here. Uh, then you get a number that says pressure. Pressure is not the, the amount of uh, energy, um, how hard you hit. It's the way I, I measure pressure. We measure pressure is how much joules or energy you take off every 10 seconds. So um, so it's basically effective pressure. Like So how many times have you scored uh, every 10 seconds? Uh, blocking is the inverse of that. So if uh, the other player has scored on me every 10 seconds, that's essentially what my blocking is. It's an, um, So you always see these numbers reverse. So 40 joules per second per 10 seconds of pressure would be the blocking for the other player. And you see how these, these numbers inverse there. Combos is what percentage of kicks are actually combos. So this would be significant. Uh, I was kind of surprised to hear uh, Terrence's uh, analysis on, on uh, the importance of this. So basically, you kick four times. Uh, two of those kicks were in within a one second window. So your combo, let's say in the total round, you kicked four times, and two of those within a one second window, then your combo percentage would be 50% in this example, right? Total number of strikes, pretty straightforward. Uh, total power, so out of all the kicks that you landed, how hard were they? Number of head strikes, uh, number of body strikes, hardest hit, number of combos. So the other one was percentage of combos. This is number of combos. Um, then number of counters. So someone hit you, you hit them back within one second. Number of combo breakers. So someone's going ham on you, and then boom, you stop it with a scoring point. Uh, so that's a combo breaker. How long it took you to hit the first point. And then how long did it take you to remove all the health? So this is a health bar system, but you can also think of it the same in, in a point gap system. So we looked at those. Um, so if you're if you're in a gaming world, like this is all like, yeah, this is, the, the you know, you're playing uh, Call of Duty, like you have this uh, and then uh, a ton more. Uh, obviously in the Taekwondo world, we don't have this data as easily accessible, but um, uh, but it, 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 we, we do make it easily accessible now with uh, the 2020 armor and the app. Um, so I'll go, we'll, we'll talk about which of those data points uh, we think um, are, is significant, especially given today's game. And the last couple of views is, so this is just a timeline of everything that happens, so all the hits. And then lastly, this graph here on uh, the bottom it shows energy scoring. This is basically shows uh, bottom is a timeline, and then this, the circles are when the hits happened and at what intensity. Um, and we'll talk about why that's significant. So look at, at these data points uh, of pressure blocking combos, number of strikes, total power. Um, <clears throat> I asked Terrence which ones he thought would be the most significant in today's game. And you said pressure and combo percentage. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that a little more. Yeah, I mean, like, if we want to go towards the gaming route, I'll try not to geek out too hard here. <laughs> no, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, for me, like, like when I'm, we're talking about Call of Duty a little bit, I think the aggressive players, the player that applies the most pressure, the ones that are the ones that um, that end up getting the kill or getting the, the finishes or whatever you want to call them in that matter, I think, and how that translates to our sport is the same way. If I can apply the maximum amount of pressure to you, it's going to cause you to – make a mistake, it's gonna cause you to end up in the corner, it's gonna cause you to fall, it's gonna cause you to grab. So being able to apply pressure to, to 
apply pressure to lead to my scoring shots, you know? Right. So it's not necessarily every shot for me has to be 100%, like, doosh, doosh, doosh. We don't have to hit everything heavy. But applying pressure within our attacks allows us to kind of hit those big scoring shots and find those openings. And it creates the – it makes – it forces the other person to be more responsive as opposed to dictating the matches. So for me, pressure is – it's huge. And I think it has to be modified again. We're not going to go out there and just go for it the whole time. I understand how that can be bad as well. You know, some players get away with it. Players who have amazing cardio, you know, some players at that, again, that's what they do at home. I don't think we can, I think that's a training style. I think that's a fighting style. And I, I think that's a special to certain players, to be honest with right. you. Um, and as far as um, combos, like we, we were speaking a little bit, I said about combos, the, if I, if you kick once, and I kick four times, the likely I have a better chance of scoring. So being able to put shots together, and, and the, for me, I call it, I talk to my guys, I call it the transition. Transitioning from one shot to another, right? Being able to go forward, backwards, in between, to the punch, into the clinch, over the shoulder, turning out. The, the cleaner your transitions can be, the more mm. difficult you are to fight. Because right. Because there's no time in which the player, the other player or opponent um, – can interject and, and, and break that. We talk about the combo breakers. We, right. we limit those by the simple transitions and the easy, smooth transitions. Right. And, um, so I, I talk about that a lot, like being ready before, being ready afterwards, being able to go from one attack to another, being able to go from two attacks to a defense, but that continual fighting for two minutes. And that doesn't mean kicking for two minutes. That just right. means fighting for two minutes. Right, right. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's up? <laughs> You're used to this as a coach, as an athlete. What is a good combo percentage? So you throw – we were talking about, you know, uh, some of the Korean uh, athletes, the minus 54, who does 60 kicks uh, in, in a match and lands half of them. Um, we don't know how much of those are combos. But right. what is a good, <clears throat> good combo percentage? So, again, defining a combo that uh, – a, a shot that scores within a one-second window. Um, mm -hmm. What would be a good number to strive towards? Um, I would say you got to be anywhere between the upper 60%, 65 oh, really? I, I, I mean, with this game, because think about it, before we go back to when we fought, right? If I was faster and we were standing open stance and I went off the line, boom, right. I wanted the referees to hear that shot, see right. that shot, focus on that shot, and press the button. Right. I didn't want you to respond, right? right. I wanted to be no response, so I would kick, I would close, I shut it down. I would look at the referees. I'd yell a little bit more. Right. And then the point would go up, you know? Right. And that was kind of what we – that's what I wanted anyways. I wanted to be the only person kicking. Right. right. And this and, – and, and with the electronic system, it, it's hard for that to happen. You know what right. I mean? The, the referees and the sense of scoring on a chest guard or a helmet don't really matter. Right. And, of course, they, 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 they press the turns and all that stuff. But as far as that, it doesn't matter. So me only wanting to kick once isn't very – it's not, as, it's not as good as anymore. Every now and then you take a single shot. But I think if you're kicking two, three, four times, again, the likelihood of you scoring, the likelihood of you hitting the guard the first time, kicking somewhere else where they have to move their guard, and then the third shot coming through to actually get contact with the chest guard is huge. Right. right? right. We, see it, we see it so often, yes? That first action, second action, the third one gets through. Or the right. first action person responds, I follow to the face, the next one gets through. That's the one that scores. Right. So, I mean, and to be honest with you, I think – 65 is pretty low. I think 65 is the standard if for the best players wow. in the world. I mean, we go back to always – I talk about him a lot, but we go back to Dehoon. Like, phenomenal, 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 right? He just did things that other people didn't do. He, the, the continuation of his attacks, his ability to go to the face, land, go to the face again, land, make you miss, back to the body, in for the punch. It was just – the transition was just so smooth that it right. – whether he won or lost and – all those things like that, he was able to do it consistently. And the right. person at this, the same high level competitors had a hard time following that transition. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So, and he was kicking two, three, four, or five times. And and when he kicked once, it was to set you up so he can kick again. It was, right. it, was, it was pure. It was pure. If we had a if we had the term sweet science for taekwondo, that's what that was. You know. Okay. Notice how uh, when we when we brought up the numbers, both of us geek out pretty hard here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that I don't say the conversation changes, right? I mean, also like you, you, you now have just numbers, and that's why other sports are great, right? When you, when you, when you, when you talk about numbers, it, you can't deny numbers, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's there, it's, it's, it's clear, 
it's uh it's not about oh he looked good or you know felt good it's like it's it's there like the number of combos 65 percent you're at 50 percent all the time you need to get up um so so so, okay combo percentage uh and so i i had thought that um so for sure pressure and combo uh percentage were up there um but you think those two are the most significant also compared to time to first hit so that was basically at what time uh do you hit the first shot um so i, and- I think I, I think i added that one into to pressure a little bit because that's the person who go you're saying the person who hits the first shot first right yeah but whoever effectively scores the first shot so uh, the, and, and, you know back in the day that would be the one who set the tone right, right. um so you're the first one to effectively score and right. so so you're okay okay okay, okay. sorry, sorry I, sh- I shouldn't say you're the first one to effectively score um it's when you had your first shot so a time for a f- my first shot could have been 30 seconds that it scored and yours could be nine seconds so you were the first you hit earlier than than i did right so you so in the round in the round yeah. okay in the round yeah so who hit first in that round i mean i, I mean we can't deny that scoring ability is huge right i mean we've seen it some people have like magic foot guards they hit and score even right. if they're sometimes you see people with their the, the we talk about the pressure the kicking ratio is down but right. like their percentage of scoring is high Maybe they're right. kicking ten times, but they're scoring four, five. That's you know what I mean. That's a lot. I think I think you got to the scoring scoring ability is um is huge. Uh, being able to find the chess guard is huge, of course, and that goes back to like I said about the the like Dae Lee, like his scoring percentage was high. Right. You know, he picked his foot up. We as the audience are like, that didn't score. He didn't score. Right. You know, you're you're amazed when it doesn't go off because you're so right. used to him scoring every time his foot leaves the mat type thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, so I think that for me that applies. I think that I think again, scoring is huge. Of course, being able to score. If you have a whole lot of pressure, and no scoring ability, and the other person is just kind of picking you apart, we lose the match. So I think right. we gotta have scoring ability. So I mean, if I if I had to rethink it, then scoring ability or what, what would you call it? What was it again? Um, um, time to first hit. Time to first hit would be number one, right? Because mm-hmm. time to first hit pressure and then the, um the combos if, if we if we have to look at it that way if that's what that means interesting interesting okay um <clears throat> the uh so if when looking at the graph um so this one i'll kind of blow it up here so if you were to look at a fighter if you're looking at all your five boys and and that's um stats and let's say you had this for every match so mm-hmm. basically this is again uh, x-axis here is time and the y-axis is the number of hits, and just assume you know it was it was energy-based scoring. Um, mm-hmm. But what would you want to see? Would you would you want to see? And let's say your player is red, or sorry, blue here. Okay. Would you want to see like the first thirty percent of time, a whole bunch of big blue dots? Uh, would you want to kind of spread o- over time because you want them to be consistent? And so, so the blue dots are scoring. Yeah. So the blue dots is when the score happened and what percentage you took off. So for example, oh, yeah. this blue dot says that at seven second mark, uh, the blue player took off 20%, 27% health off the health bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then at the around nine second mark, 28 seconds and so on. I think, I think I, I, I would want to see a fast start, but also some sustainability throughout the round. I mean, that's, that's what you want, right? You want to start fast. You want to maintain and you want to speed up again. Like, you know, you want to be able to do all all three of those things w- when necessary, um, but I, I like we go back to what we were just saying. I, I think the scoring first is uh, actually pretty huge because it it, it uh, applies pressure to the other person, right? Right. It puts right. them in a situation where, well, shoot, if I'm down, if, if they were able to score a big back kick for the scoring system in the first ten seconds, I'm down four zero in right. less than ten seconds. And now I know I have to do something. So now maybe that's gotten me completely out of my game. And I didn't want to have to go first, but now I have to go first. So, right. for, so it, it helps you apply pressure. But if I if I had to say if, as far as this the, the chart, I mean, I'd want to see a bunch of those blue dots across the board, right? <laughs> like, right, right. Because maybe we're chipping away and like some of the some of the energy removals higher. But um, but at the same time, if, I'm, if you're if let's say if I'm getting. 10% removal, 10% removal, 10% removal, 10% removal, and you're hitting 30. Right. I'm still winning. Right. You know what I mean? I'm still winning. So if the goal is to eliminate the, the power source or the, what, what is it? I'm sorry, the jewels or yeah, the health bar. Yeah. Health uh-huh. bar. To eliminate the health bar, then I want the player. And that's like any video game, right? Some players are super strong and they don't hit that often, but when they hit, it's like 30% health con. Right. 
Right. I think if I had my choice of player style and I, this was an actual video game, I want the player that's taken off a lot of health quickly, like rapidly throughout the throughout the mm -hmm. game, you know, because okay. we're building towards the end. And again, now our defense can be important. Now I can make you miss. But every time I hit, I'm just getting something off the board, something off the board, something off the board. Right. Um, and that's like any game. You look at like you go back to Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, the heavier players were nobody. Everyone. I For me, I like using them. But I would use them when I was playing someone that was not as good. Right, know? right. Because I know yeah, I can kind of toy with them, hit them <laughs> heavy and pick with them a little bit. But you know, you never pick you didn't pick the heavier shots against the the guy, the quicker guy that just constantly got it, their leg in the air, their foot on the chest guard or whatever we're talking about as far as right, games, right. actual fight. So Yeah, and I think this is important to talk about because one of the challenges with the current point scoring system is very difficult to understand, right? Yeah. And I think one of the ways to fix it actually is this energy scoring uh, and hopefully WT eventually adopts it this way but uh, assuming it does end up going that way then yeah I, you know relying on a couple hail marys um uh, is never uh a, you know a reliable strategy versus you know um getting 10 10 percent and consistently being able to score mm -hmm. so if we were to look at this graph then you'd want to see your let's say your player's blue you want to see your dot here first you want to see some higher concentration at the beginning and then being able to consistently see some points throughout um uh, so it'd kind of be like a shape of a I don't know what I, I guess a, a P, a sideways P, I guess, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can see that. I mean, like I said, just being because being able to consistently affect like so in this system, uh, uh, twenty twenty armor, being able to consistently affect the chest guard. You know, yeah, just, we need to affect the chest guard. So our scoreability or first point, first to score is huge. You know, we got to be able to hit the chest guard. Like, and for then this this allows you to work your block a little more. If I know I have good defense and you're going for those big shots and they're so easy to see, then I can right. just cover it. You know, I'm covering the big shots. I'm, I'm covering those and then I'm getting my 10% and I'm getting my 10% in. So, right. on this, so on this system, I think it even goes more so to that 45, 50 kicks around, you right. know? Yeah, yeah. As long as I can score those. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Like yeah. Score. If I'm throwing that much and the guy's just – defense god and nothing's getting through then i'm wasting my time and maybe i should slow down and try to get his arms to move get his um his uh guard to move and stuff like right, that so right. so for those um that already have the, the system and we're trying to figure out how to kind of play it for today's game so you can still obviously train with this and then what you can tell your athletes is hey look um if you know what the minimum threshold is and we have a guide that shows you what like what uh, the the energy scoring would be for they don't keep in peace. So just focus on, hey, don't hit more than 5% because it mm -hmm. doesn't matter in today's game, right? So just make your shots between 5 and 10%, uh, and then you can still get all the value and the metrics and all that kind of stuff. Right. And just, um, I, so I, yeah. for those I think I think there's still a, before I get too far apart, I think there's still a, a need to kick people hard. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. Why? That, in today's game with points yes, going still? Yes, yeah. because you still have to, it's still a fight. And sometimes, mm -hmm. whether we're winning or losing on the scoreboard, if I'm cutting you heavy, if I'm hitting you heavy, sometimes that breaks players. Well, yeah, that, that takes away your energy too, right? That mentally and physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think there, there's a there's a reason we don't. I don't it'd be hard for me to tell my guys, okay, we want to stay within this range, right? To, to, to maximize our energy, basically, is what we're doing. So we want to stay in this with this range because right. because we are using a scoring system and because they are allowed to cover. That's the only. That's the only. I think that's the only. Um, tricky part right because when you're working on the system per se and it's on a bob or a bag there's no blocking there's no nothing right. blocking so it becomes easy to score and maybe it's right. easy to stay in that, uh, that five to ten percent window what, uh, what we're talking right. about but i need to kick heavier when someone's guarding because maybe i need to get through their guard and hit them heavy right so focusing on a, i think smooth smooth trans tr smooth hits solid hits and getting your foot flat on the chest guard is right big but i think the system can be used to for the coach more so if we're going in that direction. Because right. I get this data back and I can read this data and now I can see where athlete A is at really throughout, right. uh, let's say if I set it for two minutes, I can right. see where athlete A is throughout this two minutes and I can see how heavy we're hitting and you know what which ones are scoring and that number, whatever whatever the, the transition number is between this system and the, the data right. and all that stuff like that. So now I have a good idea. And then if I'm if, if I'm even smarter, I can record this. Right. And in recording it, I can compare when his foot's hitting compared to what the amount of energy is being taken off and where his foot position is. Where is his right. knee position? Where is his hip position? Because certain athletes have the ability to kick a certain way and make the chest guard go off. Right. Other athletes have to turn their knee over a lot more to get more impact. It has to be more right. of a 
technical thing. You know right. what I mean? So it allows you to kind of take the data and maybe you're not, let's say we don't record it, but if I, if I have the data and I have it live on my phone and I'm watching him kick and I watch it every time Athie A doesn't turn his hip over, it doesn't hit that number. So right. it simply allows me to go, hey, we got to turn our hip over more when we're looking for this shot, especially if that's their game and their fighting style. Right. So right. having this having this kind of data is, I think, is it's huge, right? It's yeah. It's one of the things I think in our sport for a long time that we we don't have. I mean, you look at this is this is this is a unique and special system. You you look at the you're able to say, okay, my athlete went first this many times. You're able to say, okay, my athlete took off this much when he hit this much, and then they, it's it's broken down in a way that it's. It's easy to read in a sense uh, when you do compare it to the data system. I think it's a great training tool when it, mm. when it comes to that. You're, I know, I know. We I played with it a little bit. Um, I haven't had a chance to actually train my guys with it. Hopefully, we can we can figure that out soon, and I have a chance to kind of put it yeah. into like the system and things that we do. Because I think it's a great tool for to so that I'm not guessing or I'm not or maybe when I walk away and I'm focused on one athlete, when I come back to this athlete, I can see exactly where he was. So it almost yeah. allows me, if I if look at that way, I have two or three coaches in the room. You know what I mean? I, right. I'm watching this guy, maybe, but I still get the data and things that I need from 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 everyone else, you know? Right, and right. You can kind of tell over a long period of time where the the data is getting better or your your shots are yeah. getting better. So you have that that longevity of training. And that's that's what interests me the most, to be honest with you, is that, right. is that ability to kind of – because I write down a lot of things, to be honest with you, like whether it's at a competition, at the, at the gym – I write a lot. Of, I formulate a lot of things so that I can go back to those things. And right. I have a certain language in my own head that I speak. I talk a lot in percentages um, to myself, okay. you know, and okay. I a lot of percentages. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool to see this, that the system has its ability to kind of do the same things, you know? Yeah. And, and, and this data is new. This the way we're presenting. This is new. So um, that, uh, that what gets measured gets improved. I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about that video. By the way, um, I didn't record it in this one, but there actually is a video of it okay. as well. Um, so you can reference those points. Um, and then lastly, uh, yeah, what we're talking about is the aggregation of the data. So this is one data point. Uh, this is a moment in time. This is one fight. Um, but then there's a, also a view where we aggregate that over time. Um, mm -hmm. So we say, what is your pressure or your combos over time, over mm -hmm. a week, over a month, over a year? Right. Uh, and then you can actually compare it to other players. Mm -hmm. So you can say, here's what I am, and here's what your other athlete is. This athlete's winning more, and you can see where you're, you, you know, you're, um, you're, you're deficient. So right, no, I, uh, I think, yeah, that's uh, that's and Jerome. Yeah, what's yeah. up, Jerome? I didn't, see, I didn't even see the comments till now. What's up, guys? <laughs> yeah, no, um, I think that's, I think that's huge. I think this, like you know, we've talked about this system a lot um, here and there, but I, I think yeah, it's, I, I, I like it. Um, I think. Because what we, how we fought before, and you know the things we did, it, it was a lot about pressure and how much energy I could take off my opponent mentally and physically, right? right. You know, sometimes you hit a guy first shot, and it's just like he don't want no more of this match. It's like, right. dude, how did I end up here right now? Right. You know, right. and then and then and then for then the system opens up, and now I'm hitting the chess card, and I'm, and I'm taking an effective shot, and you've seen it where you hit him and it's like 25% off. I hit him again, it's like 25% off. And you right. know, if I get him one more good time, this guy might quit. He yeah. might quit. You yeah, know? yeah. So you're <laughs> aiming to hit him one more good time and you see it. And maybe he doesn't quit the whole match, but you can see this match is 100% in your favor at this point. And now right. we're just managing through to get to, to end this, you know? Right. right so right. I, I think this is kind of the same concept that you looked at it, except for it puts it in uh, a video game format. It puts it in a actual, now the, for the audience, they can see, okay, this guy is 100%. And now, and they watch it diminish, and all those things like that. Right. right so I think right. that I think that's I think that's huge. You know, I think it, it's it's a fun thing to watch. And I was able to watch the UBL a little bit, and I, I like the concept. I like the the, the background and the setup. Uh, we talked yeah. a little bit about the other things as well, but um, I think it's cool, and I think it's a it's a great way to. We want to talk about revolutionizing what we do. About we want to talk about making um, what we do more easier. Um, Spectator friendly, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's high. you see the scoreboard going down, you understand, you know. And I think right. you know, you build the culture a little bit more. You get them to understand the techniques and the, the strategies, and that's here nor there. That's like any sport, but they can turn on the channel and sit back and go, okay, this guy has a hundred percent. He has a hundred percent now. Up oh, fifty. Up. Oh, you know, it's like you can right. see it on the board as opposed yeah. to point changes and all those things like that. So I think I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and the other significant thing that uh, is a challenge with, with the point scoring system is the, um, the, the the technicalities, right? So you do a 360 or a back kick, you stop the game, add the points. But it could be a crappy 360. If you did a 360, it graze, right? Um, mm -hmm. And sure, it was more technically difficult. But what if you just got your ass rocked by a roundhouse kick? Like mm -hmm. a solid open stance when you just ate it. Right. Why are those two things? Mm -hmm. Why is one thing the week 360 worth more than that solid roundhouse? Well, and I, I think you know what's so funny. I was talking to someone like a, a couple of weeks ago, actually. When we again we go back and I, again just to compare, not the game, not the styles, but I think the the, the mentality we did things right. because they were open. Right. I didn't I didn't kick you in the face to get three points. I kicked you in your face because your hands were down. Right. You know what right. I mean. I didn't back kick you in the body because it was worth four. I back kicked you because you went off the line too far, and I right. trained to do this. So I'm back kicking you. It was we right. we, we, look, we look for more of the, the open areas in the fights, and now now it's more like okay, I can get three points from touching your helmet. I can get three points from spinning and just figuring out how to get my foot on your chest guard. So right. of course the the game condone is doing, I would say, fancier things, but like like you go back to the to, to point of saying okay, I've hit you five old scoring system versus new score. I hit you five solid times to the body and I'm winning five, zero, five solid times. And right. I went for it again because I'm being aggressive and you spin me and now you score five and we're going into overtime. Right. One shot, but you've been beat up for two minutes. Right. That, that I think that's where, that's where uh, my disconnect with the, the two happens because I, 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 you know, you know, I come I, like where I come from and how we fought before I did things simply because they were open. Right. I did it because that was your weakness. I did it because those are the spots that you gave me to work with. And so right. having more tools, having more abilities was huge. Right? right now. Now I think that if a guy can be really good technically, but giving up, I mean, this scores, this scores, this scores, then we're losing that match. It doesn't matter who's better. It doesn't right. matter who right. has better tech. No matter who scores more. And again, I talk to my guys about that a lot. I mean, that's just, that's the game that we play. So we kick more to score more. We there's strategy, of course, and we try to apply pressure and do all the things that we've talked about throughout this whole kind of conversation. But you know, we're we're, we're looking for the inside shots that would never score before. You know, right? But look, right. I mean, we would we would hit face shots that would just nip, and the referees like, eh, it wasn't a fact. And that's just like boxing, right? You'll see some jabs, right. and maybe they get through and they nip a little bit, but the judges don't score. Mm -hmm. So, because I, I feel like that's important because my defense was good enough to not take any affected damage, like you can tell on the system. I didn't mm -hmm. take mentally, I didn't take any damage, physically, I didn't take any damage. But because it, but we go to the new system because it knit me. Now I'm down three points. Right. But I don't right. think the correlation between that makes any sense. If I can block it and I'm really unaffected by it, then I'm okay. And then I'm hitting big shots, you know? Right, so. right, right. Yeah. Cool. I love talking about data and all the insights. Um, yeah, because it, it makes our job as coaches easier. Because um, so, a lot of people get scared by data. They're like, oh, I don't know what to do with it. But you know, I think to remind people is a lot of people don't necessarily know what to do with it um, because it's new. Um, but even getting one insight uh, and and acting on that insight, and if that improves your your win ratio, then then that's significant. So so to let people know to not not get scared by it. you don't have to be a mathematician, you don't have to be a hardcore gamer. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to look for patterns, look for trends. Mm -hmm. Um and as long as you can see those and consistently well because with data there's two points to, to remember is like what, what the data point is and how consistently you measure it. Um because if you just have one data point in time every four years it's it's useless, right? Because right. you don't see any trends. So you gotta kind of keep it consistent. And and just start with one. Just start with one data point, right? If you if you're overwhelmed with with all of these, some people like give me as much data as you can. Some people like I don't know what to do. Start with one. You know how to eat an elephant, one bite at a time. Yeah. Just start somewhere, and and then you'll you'll kind of build the the skill set to to iterate and improve on all that. Yeah, I I agree. I think that if you're gonna use one data point for this, and I know you you showed me a couple of the modes like a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. is a, the I guess it would be the cardio mode. Yeah. Where, and for a coach, you know, we're sitting there, we're like, faster, more, more, more. And it's only we're going off of our eye, right? We're going off of, right. okay, is he slowing down? Is he going slower? But if right. I had, if you have something like this, it's kind of, you know, you know, there's no, there's right. no, there's no, there's no argument of whether a person's working harder or they can't. Right. Harder. You literally see it over the span of a week, over two trainings, three trainings, a week, a month, where, where the fall off happens. And maybe it's within the training, like how, how deep can we go into training and it stays consistent and then that fall off happens. So now you know the yeah. areas you have to correct. So for me, I I think 
first, if I had to choose, which I would use picking one data point, I think it would be just a simple cardio yeah, based stamina. So I don't have yeah. to, I don't have to guess as a coach. I can yeah. learn five, six, for my guys, five bags, you know, and I could go hit start and I can get all the data afterwards and I can watch how it progresses through the training or yeah. however I, I choose to use it per se. You know what I mean? Right, right. And so for those wondering, um, so these, these data points come from fights. Uh, so we would like analyze the fights. But the one um, Coach uh, James was talking about is the physical data point. So we can measure reaction time, power, stamina, um, those for any sort of uh, fighting, uh, MMA, boxing, taekwondo, karate. It doesn't matter. Those are three key ones, really. Um, and, um, and, and then, yeah, so what your stamina is over time. And it's easy to kind of – you never know what a stamina is. And like you said, unless you measure it, because you can look like you're kicking a target, you know, but if you're not really kind of, again, putting your hip into it and effectively turning, mm -hmm. which takes a different muscle, um, and then you don't, you don't really know. So you kind of really need something to physically tell you that. So, mm. uh, and, and, we, and cause what stamina, what that means is now you can transfer that to pressure, right? As, cause if you've got sustained stamina, then you should be able to have sustained pressure. If you don't, it probably means you're, you know, you're not getting around the blocks or your technique's ineffective, but you need to start with the baseline of that stamina. So everything else can be built upon. So, yeah. so there you, there you have it. So you heard it from, um, uh, the Olympian himself, the, the coach of the U S military team, the, the stuff that he's focusing on with the new rule changes um, with the round base system and, uh, and and the warning. So if we can recap, uh, uh, physically, uh, things should still be similar to kind of what you did. Obviously, stamina is still being a big part of it. Um, but the biggest shift is mentally in, in, in the athletes to, to not let that, uh, that those rounds slide. Uh, and to treat the the situations a little bit differently was more important in some situations. Like if you're um, if you're down, <laughs> uh, and less important in other situations. So if you lost nine one in the first round, it doesn't matter in the second round. So those mentality shifts, uh, managing the warnings uh, is, is is a big part. Uh, then we went through the data uh, of, on the 2020 armor system and energy scoring, and we talked about some of the stuff that um, that you can look at there that can kind of give you predictors for performance. So, you know, Yvette, uh, me and her will say what gets measured gets improved. And if you can look at something before you step into the ring and adjust for that before you step into the ring, and if that helps you increase your chance of winning, then you know, why, why not have that extra piece of information? Because those flights are expensive. You know, those hotels are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> those registration fees are expensive. Um, why not have that piece of data going into it and then adjust your strategy uh, beforehand instead of waiting to see if the training has, has worked? So that's, we covered a lot um, and, and we've run out of time. Uh, but if uh, we will repost this, if anyone has questions for, for me or, or Coach uh, Jennings, uh, let us know. But um, you saw when we brought up the data, we kind of we geeked out pretty hard. Um, I think that's an indicator of the um, of I think the, the future of, of of the sport. You know, we are uh, in the middle. There's probably coaches younger than us, not that many. Uh, we're still probably the younger generation coaches. There's definitely coaches older, but um, you know not as, as afraid of technology, not as much afraid of data. So I do think this is the way the future is going. And with the round-based system, I think that's a good change for the sport. And I think uh, WT just needs to fix the scoring. It's too complex. It's hard to understand. And hopefully they adopt the energy-based scoring system, and then and that'll be fun to watch for the general audience. Cool. Um, anything else, Coach, uh, Coach Jennings? Uh, where, are you, where are you going next? When, when's your next game? I will be at the, what's it called, the Pan Am Series in Dallas. And then okay. I'll head out to Rome for the first Grand Prix with one of my athletes. Super excited about that trip. Um, I, I, it's a, Rome is one of my favorite uh, venues, so it's okay. um, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome um, just to kind of see the game and whatever the new rules are. I'm, I'm interested to see them being played, and implemented at the highest level. You know what right. I mean? Because we can argue over. Because I've been, like I said, I've been in the Pan Am region of, um, and I've only seen it in the Pan Am region to be honest with you. We're, we're in Belgium, we used the old rules, Puerto Rico, and um, here that we just came from DR for the Pan Am. So I'm interested to see how the world has interpreted. And I've watched a couple of videos here and there, but there's nothing like being live in the venue and being able to, right. to feel it and see it. And it, it's a different it's a different look. So I'm super excited for Rome, for my athlete to get a chance to get back out there against the best in the world. And, you know, hopefully we have a, a good run at it. I, you know, we're, we're always looking for those, those big moments, and that's what we're after. Right. So I'm excited for Rome, but that'll be the next two things. Okay, cool. Well, looking forward to seeing you in person again. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. 
and Coach Jennings, until next time, sir. Yes, sir. Until next time soon. Yes.